Hello everyone. As you can see, I got up showing that dead men tell no tales. Merriam-Webster's definition of dead men tell no tales used to say that someone who has been killed cannot reveal secret information. I think about this when pursuing justice. The verse of the day is Deuteronomy 16, 19 through 20. You shall not pervert justice. You not, shall not show partiality and you shall not accept the bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and subverts the cause of the righteous. Justice and only justice shall you follow that you may live and inherit the land that the Lord your God has given you. If you know something about a situation, it may be in your best interest to pursue justice. Sometimes we find out things about discrimination, unfair treatment, or even something as serious as trafficking out and stuff. And we're afraid to get help or pursue justice for fear of our lives, for fear of our livelihoods, for fear of our reputation and our honor and what people have over us. But I can tell you, when you pursue justice and you get something out on the table, if it's somebody that's really bad and you get it out on the table, getting rid of you serves them no good for it's already out. They want to silence you before you got time to speak. They want to silence you before you have time to speak. And mind you, when we're doing this as believers, there is supernatural powers that are behind us when the Lord has us to pursue justice, when he reveals something to us. I wasn't going to share, but man, I got to share. I just got to figure a way to tweak my story to not reveal too much information. But it goes a little something like this. In 2014, an event happened to me that really showed me how God will protect me as I pursue justice. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, there was a girl, I was single at the time I was talking to, but she says she had to go to Guatemala. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And she says she's only going for a couple months, but she's a little bit worried. I was like, why are you worried? And she was like, I don't know how to say this in English, but I'm worried because my father is what you call a, 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 a gangster. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, you sure you want to go? And she's like, yeah. So she goes to Guatemala. As she's there, communication to the outside world dropped offline for her. And we had plans to talk and things. And she looked sickly and deathly. There was one Facebook picture that was thrown up. And, and this girl looked like it was forced. And her, her skin and everything looked so much different. And uh, so I start researching Guatemala and I found out that even family members put their people into trafficking, like really bad. They'll even sell their own children out into trafficking and things. So I start doing more research and, and things and she, she finally gets a hold of me and she says that she's been trying to call me, uh, but things... <laughs> Things are not like what she 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 thought they'd be. And she's like, oh, I got to go. And when uh, she worked at, at Chipotle before she left. And so I was more worried about her, not on a romantic level, but just as, man, a human being level. And I knew the date that she was supposed to return. So I called, privately called her number. And she answered. And I... She sounded sad. I'm like, is everything okay? Like, one, I don't know how to say this. I hate my mom. I hate my dad. 
I was like, man, what, what's going on? Can you go back to work? I don't look right. I, I, I can't go back. So what do I do? I get off the phone and I start calling trafficking hotlines. And I, I mean, it had to be hotlines because I had to call multiple. I called three in total. I told them the situation. I told them that the girl's back in the States and I know where she is living. Can you check on her? And they told me, no, how about you uh, give her our number and have her call us? A trafficking hotline, mind you. Do you have a rape victim called a rape victim hotline? Someone's in a trafficking situation. I expected, hey, you guys go check on them. They are in a situation where they cannot escape. I didn't like that answer. So I went to the police. Police told me they couldn't do a wellness check on them. And so I went to my favorite restaurant. And while I was in the restaurant, I was just kind of sad because all this happened in the same day that I was trying to get help. And out of nowhere, this and Mind you, I've... At this time, I was I was living a, a really holy life, staying strong for the Lord, abstinent in all these things, and I felt literally as though he was speaking to me. And he's like, Warren, what are you doing? Don't stay here. Don't go home to your apartment and sleep there tonight. And I was so afraid, the fear. And he didn't say this in words, it was a feeling. And I went and I went and stayed at oh. And while I was driving and stuff to get out, I was looking over my shoulder like I was crazy. <laughs> and uh, I'm doing U-turns and I'm looking like a crazy person. Mind you, nothing has even happened yet. Nothing. So I get on and, and I rest the night. And in the morning, I get this phone call and they're like, Hello, is this, uh, this woman Connelly? Say yes. <laughs> and you're like, uh, did you order furniture? And I'm like, I didn't order any furniture. They hung up right then. And I called right back, and it was a dial tone, a busy dial tone. This still day. Never had a phone. So I looked at the number, and it said Ivy Club Apartments. And I contacted my apartment manager. I had their numbs at Ivy Club Apartments, and I knew all of them were black. There was no male Hispanics there. And they answered the phone, and I was like, hey, is there any chance that I ordered any furniture? And they said, no, Warren, uh, uh, we don't take furniture up here. I'm like, no? I was like, is there any place in the building that you do? She said, no. I was like, well, let me ask you this, uh, is, would the the maintainers or the cleaners would they take it said no why this is weird and I was like okay well let me give you this number so I gave them the number they called me at 10 30 so and she was like Warren how did you get this number I said well you know, this is who called me said I have furniture she said that's the that's the number to the maintenance hall, maintenance room in the apartment complex and that doesn't even have a uh, a working landline. There's not even work. There's a landline there, but there's not even a phone. So I warned, this is weird. Can you tell me what's going on? And I was like, oh, I don't know yet. And she was like, tell me around what time did you, did you get this phone call? I said around 1037. And she said, whoa. So like, tell you the truth, I did see a cleaning person walking by the apartment building at 10 30 something with another man that I didn't recognize. Warren, this is weird. Is there something I should know that I need to do? And I was like, no, no, thank you. So I'm. And yeah. So I end up ringing the bell to, to the trafficking situation and I had to get some help and some more things. But what I'm trying to say is I escaped because the Lord. Gave me a word of wisdom. And I talk about words of wisdom in, in this verse a day. He gave me a word of wisdom to escape 
a situation that was bigger than myself where the people, because trafficking is a multi-billion dollar industry, where the people were bigger than myself and they had even connections to uh, <laughs> my phone, landline, eight, AT&T, they had connections in there. And when I was calling the trafficking agencies, there's obviously a mole in there that sent them after me. It was bigger than myself, but I still pursued justice. I still seek help. I can't tell too much information on that. But let's just say God protected me as I seek justice. Like it says, justice and only justice you shall follow that you may live and inherit the land that your God is giving you. Amen. Amen. And also think about this when pursuing justice because God's going to guide you. But in the mindset, you don't worry about living so much. As John 15, 12 through 13 says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. There's no greater love than someone laying down his life for his friends, being willing to at least, and God will protect you. He will, he will protect you. He is good. As Micah 6, 8 says, he has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your Lord. Walk humbly with your God. Amen. So, yeah, whatever situation you may be facing, do the right thing. If someone comes to you and they're, they're, they have something that's pressing up against them, do what you can in the position that you can to help that person. Remember, dead men tell no tales. They can't silence what's already been put out there. And that's why it's best to get out there. I think about some of the people that are that are in dark, dark societies. The best way to get out there, put all out there on the table. That way, they can't do anything to you once it's all out there. Them doing things to you is, no. God will protect you. Put it out there. And know that he will, he will do what he needs to do. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. May many be saved. May many have courage to stand strong for you, Father. You're such a great God. In Shua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.